Okay. Hi guys. Okay. Welcome back to the um, to the session of like um, the object oriented programming session. This is a session three of like I have already discussed before like object oriented programming, right? So um, right now we are in the third session. In this session we are going to discuss more about like Java basic concepts, right? So um, the first part is like you know the comments. Yeah, the comments are done all in the uh, like but you you use the has and the asterisk for the comments. And the sort comments are done like this one, the double has. Okay. Whereas you use for the scope, you use the curly bracket for the scope. Right? Then for the control statements, you use something like C programming, like it's same as in C programming language, but uh, like uh, the syntax works <coughs> all the same. The syntax works all the same as in C programming language, like you know. Uh, like, like continue and break for okay, like do while loop okay all this while concept right the switch right okay everything all these are same okay same as for for Java okay so what are, what about the booleans? Booleans are used to represent logic values like true and false. But you know the idea is like we cannot evaluate these conditions like x equals to two. Like sometimes you got to do something like if okay the conditional conditional check like if x okay something like that. you cannot do this thing. Okay, so this is strongly prohibited okay, in Java. Especially this can be done in C programming, but in Java, like this is strongly uh, discouraged to do this. So instead, we can use some relational operators, right? So uh, you can use the relational operators like x is is not equal to zero or something like this. So and this is the way how it works here. So what about the parameters? Parameters are always always passed by values, and they can be primitive type or the objective reference so uh, the idea idea is the overall concept is like you know the parameters that you pass has to be something like it can be a primitive type of the object reference so the, the note that you, you have to uh, notify is something like while passing the parameters we just copy the object reference like we are not copying the whole object okay you have to understand this concept the concept of like whenever you pass the parameters you are just passing the reference right not the whole object okay so just uh, it's it's a point to be notified there so for constants so for constants we have to use like a final modifier like something that is uh, this one as a final modifier to uh, to declare a constant so operators used are also same as c so all the operators that we use in Java are same as C so you know everything is reused so everything is reused here like automatical relational bitwise okay everything is all reused here assignment increment decrement yeah okay everything is is all same here right so whereas the logical operators like the are they are all they work only on the boolean so you have to be careful about the concept like just boolean operator operations is done in the logical operation right okay going through the concept this was uh, just about the syntactical view of java language just the syntactic syntactical basic syntactic concepts right now what about the primitive types primitive types are something that is similar with the c, program c programming language like <laughs> integer you know double boolean character long float double void double okay all these are same right 
yeah all these are same and these are the primitive types whereas you have to be careful about the instant declaration yeah instance declaration is like first we first declare the instance name and then the type and then allocate the memory space for the reference right so for the primitive types is such like this yeah what about the classes how classes are defined and how objects are used okay to understand this this concept you have to go through the class is often called the object yeah class is often called the object to scripture and it consists yeah call from the objects it's like something you have to understand is from the objects yeah object description so yeah so the how classes are defined okay classes are often called from the object descriptor and it consists of attributes and methods okay the concept is here attributes and methods objects are pla yeah objects are passed accept messages through the method and they can also have parameters okay so uh, classes are also defined by developers so any any de developers okay they can already uh, they like define their own class or they can use something that is already existing okay something that is already existing from the library class so we also have some huge chunk of libraries where you can like extract the class import the class and use it okay this allocates the memory space for the like for example if you go and check out this car is the class and the object defined is c car c okay so this what what is what it does is this allocates the memory space for the reference and sometimes it is initialized with null by default so now while using the object the allocation and initialization initialization of the object values are made by its constructor so these are the constructors but the constructor with the empty parameter okay this is the important concept you have to understand now uh, what is overloading and when does it occur so having different methods with the same name leads to overload in java programming so one having the different methods with the same name okay same name okay if the name is same then overloading occurs here. so how can we over avoid overloading lock okay so what are the methods what are the techniques so what can what can we mostly use here okay you have to understand this concept here. the concept of understanding how to avoid the overloading okay by having different signatures okay what is a signature a signature is something that is made of method name and the ordered list of parameter types so by having different signature we can avoid the overloading so so, so understanding the concept about having different parameters inside the method name okay so the idea the concept is like having even having the same name of this like with different method with the same name but with different parameters we can avoid overloading okay so this is the understanding point yeah what are the important properties of the object so so what can be the important properties of these objects what kind of like properties are significant here Okay. you have to understand is like class identifies its object and also defines its structure right so object like you know we make a object from a class okay so class is already something that identifies its object okay so it's like a type definer okay so object is also identified by its internal unique identifier so also be careful like there is also something as a unique identifier internal unique identifier for object so uh, this means like the object each objects have a their own unique identifier okay so each objects created are different from each other they do not they, they are not interrelated <coughs> right so zero one or more references can point to a same object but a reference is not a object
So understanding the point that the most important concept here is like we can s we have to say that the reference is not an object. Got me? So we can provide any kind of reference to any kind of object. Yeah. How do we create a new object here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I guess uh, this is all about the question answer sessions okay we are what we are doing here right now it's all about the java basic concepts right so now going on through the concepts we will say about like how do we create a new object right how do we create a new object the creation of a new object is done through the keyword name new okay so new is a keyword here that is used to create a new object like for example you can see the example here like aeroplane you create a new aeroplane object here from this keyword new right what is the new keyword it's like what this new keyword returns is a reference to the piece of memory that is containing the created object okay so this keyword also calls the constructor method of the object and this is with or without parameters right this can be with or without parameters so this like the aeroplane object can be with or without the objects okay parameters right so this is the idea behind like creating the basic idea behind creating a new object so what is used to store the data dynamically created at runtime right so we use like mostly we use the heap memory okay we use the heap memory for executing java programs like instances created by keyword new are also in the heap memory so understand like everything that need to be executed are all just stored in a heap memory and then if you start thinking like the objects any new objects that you create are also stored in the heap memory so overall we use heap memory to uh, dynamically allocate the memory that as if the data like java already stores the like allo like allocates and deallocates the memory automatically like right Okay, so what are the constructor methods? The methods like the constructors are used to construct the objects, new objects, right? So it contains operations, right? Like initialization of attributes. We want to create, okay, we want to execute on each object as soon as it is created, right? So attributes are initialized with default values here before using it in any constructor. So like for for example so whenever you initialize some attributes okay before con constructing it like you have to initialize it for example if you are using a numeric you are initializing it with zero so if you are using a boolean then you are initializing with false so so like likewise if you are using a reference then you have to initialize it with null before using it as a constructor uh, variables right so if a constructor is not declared then the default constructor will with no parameters is defined by default okay so constructor do not have declared or written type do not have declared i mean so it doesn't have it doesn't have actually the idea is it doesn't have a declared do not have a declared and then have a declared and then a default constructor or or default constructor with no parameters defined by the default. So if a constructor do not have a declared or a default constructor with no parameters is defined by default. So if a Declared. No, if if a constructor do not have declared a default constructor, okay, if it doesn't have a declared default constructor, then with with no parameters is defined by the default. So so this is a default constructor that has no parameter. Okay, will be defined if the constructor is not defined like by by the by the developer. 
right? So constructor do not have a decla declared a return type. So there is also no return type. Maybe I'm just not okay. understanding what you mean. Right? There is also no return type. And if, like here the main point was, like if there is no constructor defined, then we have a default constructor. Like default constructor. Yeah, overloading can also occur in constructors. Like we can also have like over overloading in constructors. So also similarly as I said before, like we can avoid this overloading by using different signature declaration, right? So this is also the idea, a different idea, like the different idea, like the same idea that I have discussed before. So how do we refer to a current object? We use the keyword this. Okay, so this is the keyword that is used to refer the current object. This will refer to the object upon which the methods has been invoked. It doesn't work for the object that has not been invoked. In the object. Okay, so how do we invoke the method on object? So what is invocation? Yeah, so the understanding concept is like we use the dotted notation dotted notation something that is a dot like as if you can for an example you can see something like this right as a dot like so you can the idea is like whenever invoking a method on an object we have the object reference is invoking something a method invoking is like it's calling or something like okay so note if you are invoking the method with another method but under the same object then dotted notation is not required so when, when is it not required it is not required if we are invoking the method with another method but under the same object so it's under the same class okay under the same class two methods are declared and a method is trying to invoke another method under the same class then in this situation we are not going to invoke the like use the dotted method i mean dot notation right so like how how can we use the combined dotted notation like so uh, combined notation like you as before you know while printing something printing out something like you use something like system dot out dot uh, print line okay something like okay this is some like the text so here are two dotted notation, combined dotted notation. So when can we use this? Okay. So like something in this situation, in like printing some situation, we use the combined dotted notation. Okay. Like there is a something like system. Okay, which is a class in the package. Okay. And this out. Okay, is something that the object of type print string. Okay. And this print ln is the method. Okay, of the print string. Yeah. Right? Okay, this is the idea, the idea and the concept. Now, what kind of operations are perform performed in the references? Okay, we can use only relational operators, right? Like equals, double equals, or not equals. Okay, and the equality is evaluated on the values of references, and not on the values of the object. Okay, so the, the kind of operation that are performed perform on the references are, are different. Okay. So we can use like only relational operators or and then the equality con condition is evaluated on the ob on the values of the object and not on the values of the object okay. not on the values of the references but not on the values of the object so this is the concept you have to understand now string class okay in java lang java dot language library so there are some some kind of string class in java language library so the what is what is this string class what does it contains okay. the concept to understand is this one now a string is something an array of characters okay and then there is no primitive type to represent strings okay there is no any primitive types as we have told you like there are primitive types like integer character okay like void something like this right boolean so there is no no primitive type for strings okay to represent the okay so in 
class string is not modifiable okay. so you have to understand that class string is not modifiable okay whereas if you go and check out class string buffer is modifiable okay so you can just change this class okay this can be changed whereas string class is the class that is uh, is not modifiable okay you cannot change any any attributes you can change any method of a string class right so you can see the example here like string s okay is a new string and then how do you create a new string object how do you create a new string buffer object is all defined here now check that you can like you are strongly uh, encouraged like you are strongly encouraged to go and check out the java documentation okay for more information if you want to know more about like string class methods and string buffer methods okay class methods then java documentation is the best place to know out and more about this method and the implementation okay so now going out through the string we can see that there are like how can we con can concatenate two strings like if you want to concatenate like if you want to add something like two strings then you are going to use like the addition operator okay so you know this is also used if you want to automatically convert to string like for example if you are using here like a pi plus 3.14 3.14 is a number right so if one is a number you can directly concatenate with the string that is already existing right so this is on the the second concept about con concatenation like okay how moduli modularization works in coding in java coding yeah like you know how do you modular modu you know modulate so this is the concept like if you want to do like example is something like washing machine okay there is a washing machine and you want to modulate some code coding concept in a washing machine like you want to design a code here so how do you do it like the first thing what you have to do is like uh, you have to design the concept and this concept should be modularized into separate like separate items separate modules okay you cut like you cut down into intercomponent interaction okay so intercomponent interaction is there and then what is done is like we identify and delegate is like you pass the responsibility to each component okay delegation is done there okay so components like how do you delegate the responsibility how do you identify and how do you delegate the responsibility is like for components like you say that components can be defined as a classes okay so interaction can be defined as a read or write attributes okay so interaction can be also sorry inter interaction can be done by read or write attributes whereas interaction can be done by calling a method so this is the idea so this kind of ideas we use while we design how to code okay how like this is a preliminary step to like uh, to coding okay so preliminary steps like the first basic steps fundamental step is like modularizing some certain objects objectively just thinking objectively this is the idea so how scoping works for a member of a class so member of a class means like attributes methods all which are inside the class okay so how the scoping works there yeah like private okay members is visible and accessible from instance of a same class only so if you declare some certain members as a private then the members are only visible and accessible right from instance of the same class only so whereas if you declare it as a public then these public variables like our members are accessible from everywhere anywhere anywhere in the class okay everywhere so how do you read or write the private attributes so private attributes are are like you know modified or they are accessed by using some certain methods which are declared in the source that is the setter method and the getter method 
So setter methods are used to modify the private attributes, whereas getter methods are used to access the private attributes. Okay, so these are the methods that, okay, you have to, it's like the, the concept, the theoretical concept is this one. Okay, so overall here I am trying to give you some kind of theoretical background. Okay, so practical concepts are more to be understood later on. Okay, it will come later on. Right? And like package features. Package features like package, what is package? Right? Package is something like a logical set of class definition. So each package has its own new scope. Thus, we can have same class name in different packages without conflict. There is no over overriding occurs here. Okay, in packages, it is some kind of logical like arrangement of of like it's like something package is some features that is used to manage huge chunk of code okay so the idea behind package is this one so um, yeah like how to give a name to a package okay so like conventionally like by convention way we can use a uh, something like the naming is done by using internet name in the reverse order so like you know for example com dot new okay niranjan dot www dot okay my package so this is a convention way okay, by convention you use a reverse order method but how to use the package then okay we can use package declare okay declaration at the beginning of each class so package declaration is done at the beginning of each class okay for example the package declaration means package dot the name of the package is declared in the beginning of in the header beginning of the each class so when where needed we just use the import keyword so you can import the package okay to like you can use the import keyword to uh, at the beginning of the class to like to access the package the classes of the package so if you import you can import directly a single class by defining its whole path name or you can import all the subclasses okay from the but not the sub packages all the subclasses all the classes by just declaring as a asterisk okay so what is the default package package having oh okay package having no okay has, has no name okay so package having no name is called a default package okay and this are is specified then the class belongs to a default package when no package is specified then the class belongs to a default package so if a class do not have any package then it falls in a default package classes in default package cannot be accessed by classes residing in other packages right so the classes that is default package cannot be accessed so you know this is like it's illegal like you know so we are you are strongly discouraged to use uh, default packages right and what are the visibility or scope of the packages right so there are different kind of visibility you can like three can three most important visibility that you can find in a package like if you Defi define something like a identify as a public okay so in this case class and public members of a are visible from outside the packages whereas if you do not declare any keyword then this package visibility of a class and any members of b are not visible from outside the package okay so so the idea is if you do not want uh, your package to get visible from outside outside the like uh, the declared class then you use something like a package visibility okay this is the package visibility right and this is, and private visibility is something that is only the class can be only accessed by the members of 
this particular class. So also this is something that is discouraged to do because you know uh, in Java mostly we deal with so many classes and the interaction of the classes is most important in this uh, in Java programming language. Okay, in large scale object oriented programming language. So this is the idea. Yeah. Okay, now now dealing without about the array array in the Java. What do you see inside the in, in the array? Look, what are the concepts behind there? Like in array, like in Java, the array is something like an object that is stored in the heap. Okay, so as as notified before, like the heap, the memory uses a heap, and this is the most important concept. And the dimensions are dynamic dynamically allocated automatically allocated in runtime okay and arrays are used to order sequence of variables for same type okay. so the variables that are used inside the array are of same type so this is also some important concepts here these are all same with the C programming language okay. and they can be both primitive or the primitive type of object references so anything can be declared as an array okay. so how do you declare the array so you can declare the array by simple method and this is like integer like the bracket box so bracket box is used here okay. so empty bracket box with the array name and the type of the declared array. So array declaration allocates memory space for the reference. What it does is it simply allocates the memory space for the reference and whose default value is null. Okay, by default the value is null. By default value is null, but what it does is simply allocates the memory space. Okay. It doesn't do anything, just allocate the memory space. So how to create the array? So creating the array is also as previously done by using a new keyword okay and specifically it is also the assign the assignment is also done hmm? like how many like what is the size of the array is also defined like five for example here yeah. okay statistically also we can initialize directly with the values but directly the values are inputted here like in the new ball like new object is here another new object is also initialized here okay so the idea is the creation of array is the idea is here now operation performed in array so what kind of operations are performed in array a simple loop operations can be performed okay so like also many other operations can be performed but mostly we uh, like use simple loop operations like for example if you go and check out the example you declare an array and with you like for for each element uh, of the array we are trying to um, uh, initialize some each index of the array okay index element of the array so what a wrapper class okay wrapper class types so wrapper class types are nothing but the objective version okay of primitive types okay you know you guys have seen something like primitive types right like, like as discussed long before there were like integer primitive types floating primitive types void primitive types boolean right character byte sort integer so all this has some some kind of objective version in java so and these are declared as a classes these are all the objective version and these are all the classes and these are mostly used to to define something like a wrapper class okay, something like a class and use use mostly in the conversion type like something when you are using a conversion from uh, primitive type to objective type then you use this wrapper class type okay now what are the static attributes right like static attributes and methods so how can how is the what is the concept behind this static attributes and methods so like what is it about like the common properties which are common to all the instances 
right? Yeah, yeah. The common properties about all the instances of an object, yeah, are then are defined with a static modifier. So something like a static keyword is done here. Okay, it's something that is common to all the instances of the object. So all the instances of the classes. For example, in a particular class, if you de define or declare a static uh, attribute, then these are common to all the instances instances of the of an object or the class. So static methods are related to any instance and are mostly used to implement functions. Yeah, they are related to any instance are mostly used to implement functions. For example, if you go and check out, we also use the static method when you declare the main method. Alright, main function, main method like acted as a function where we all the program classes are starts executing right to access static attributes and method we use the name of the class so mostly like the name of the class and the static attribute name okay for this accessing the static attributes whereas for accessing the static method we are using the name of the method name of the class and the particular method that he wants to access, execute okay lastly okay Lastly, in this lecture, okay, I just want to say uh, that there is a note about something about like the enumerator. So, what is it? It can be declared outside or inside a class, but not within the class. Okay, something something like an enumerator uh, is declared, which can be declared just only outside, okay, or inside a class, but not within the method. So, these are some kind of String. These are not a string or integers, but these are some kind of class. But constructors can be invoked directly here. Okay, so these are some kind of classes. Okay, collection. Okay, the collection of classes are declared. Okay, so space, like you can see, space or so. These are just, this is just for the general idea about enumerator. You can just check it out more about the enumerator later on, and this can be a handy. Handy function, okay. And we, this can be handy in some programming, game programming. Like if you are doing some game programming, then this can be a handy tool to use. And okay, overall, this is all about the session three of, of uh, object-oriented programming language. Okay, that uh, I have been discussing about. We will discuss more about uh, the upcoming topics later on. Okay, we'll be discussing more about like Java inheritance. So till then, just like just keep on doing the Java. Practically, just try to and just go through the the videos, lectures, and just try to understand the concepts because these are the si simple concepts that you need to know before starting to do the Java programming, right?